Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial on X4. Here we will learn how to use our merchant fleet. Mainly that means the miners and the merchants. So we did learn how to buy those things in the previous tutorial but now let's see about using them. Now we cannot actually do that before actually addressing how we use the map because that is the main interface between us and those ships. So you have Going to the map, you see all those things, but what is it that you want to see? Actually, you want to see your own property. And that, in case you were somewhere else, because that was just where I was before. So if you were, in, for example, in the mission area, and you just going to go back to the map, you're going to be again in the mission area. The way to find your property is to go to the second one, or just from here, don't press M, press Shift P. What I want to show you though is also this thing, this panel right here at the bottom, which says that what we did and what somebody completed. When one of your merchants, either a miner or a trader, finishes its job, you will be notified in that panel down to the left. It will say how much you earned, like now. It will say who it was from in a moment. Well, that's actually current reputation, so that's something else. I don't know what that was. That was way too few. Hmm. I don't know what it was. But anyway, you will see payment received this much. And after a few seconds, it will tell you who exactly the payment was from and that you have some faction increase with the area of where that trade took place. Because when you actually sell stuff, then to the Argons, for example, or to the split, then the Argons or the split will like you a little bit more. Which is basically one of the fastest ways that, that I've seen to actually raise up. Reason trade vision. Why am I getting paid? I don't mind, but awesome. But anyway, so let's see what we do, what we can. So we press Shift P and we have our list of things. What is that? Yeah, this is rich or minor M. The miner sold stuff, he sold ore basically, and we got 22,000. That's how that appears. And we're going to hear that a lot, but that's enough of that. So Shift P. We come to our property. This is my current fleet right now that I have basically doing shit for me. The types of the ships are actually quite similar to the X3 universe. You have the arrows, which is your basic fighter scouts. You have your thick, uh, not exactly in, in squares, but they are a bit in, of a curve up here. And those are your uh, transport fl uh, fleet. This is your, what you do to sell, your traders, basically. And then you have those a little bit more like a triangle, but not quite. And those are your miners. So this is a miner M. This is a trader M. I don't have large ships yet. Nobody, they're not as efficient at this point in time yet. We are starting off, we're starting off with the M's. Not smalls, M's. M's are great. So how do we use it? Well, first of all, as we said, what are we doing with the map? I've shown how the map works before because I had to use it for some things, but I've never really gotten into it that much. So mouse wheel in out, zoom in and out, drag with the left mouse button, right click for something to happen. Right now I'm clicking nowhere, so nothing happens. But if I click on the system, something happens. Now what determines what happens and what you give commands to is based on what you have selected, basically like a strategy game. If you have nothing clicked on, so this is clicked, this is not clicked. If nothing is clicked, then the game assumes that the right click command is relevant to your current ship. So right click now, I don't have anything else because this is my ship. My ship is not subject to being um, given commands because the commands you give, you actually give the commands to the person piloting the ship. Now, I am currently not in my ship. So that also doesn't apply. This ship has a captain. So that means that I have to click select my ship in order to give it questions, give it orders rather. If I right click on a sector, then that is just my personal orders. And I don't have anything to do because I'm the human, I can do anything I want. So all there is left is just to set guidance to a position. Setting guidance to a position makes this nice orange line. And then this is the marker that's away. 
if I actually take command of my vessel Hello? for a moment, I, then I will also be able to see how far that is and turn to it and go to it. This guidance is actually classified in the game as a type of mission which is at the very end. So I can just abort mission and that goes away or I can start guidance and right click it to stop guidance. Same thing to an actual station. Start guidance to an object or stop guidance to that object. As we said, open space, nothing more. But of course there are more options selected for me because again, I don't have anything selected. None of my properties are selected. So again, this right click is still for me. I can have information about it, get the logical overview of that station, more on that when we discuss stations. Set guidance, we said, external view to see it. In order to see it, you have to be on the same system as that. And if you click it, the map will not go away. See, it doesn't go away, but if I do set it away, there it is, external view of that station. F1 to return, or if you prefer, right click, external view, and then F3 again for a rather scenic view around your thingy. F1 return. So trade offers for me or trade offers for build storage because this is again to be discussed when we build stations. However, hope microchip factory means trade offers for me right now for my ship because nothing else is selected. If I select anything, then suddenly right clicking gives me more information because now that's relevant to this guy. When I right click, I will give orders to that guy, or rather to its captain. So right clicking on that, now trade with means you, that holy vision or miner, is going to trade with that station, not me. Or fly to, or dock at, or attack, or attack multiple objects, and then I'm giving something else which is more suitable for the combat. And that is the map. In practice and all that we are interested in right now. The rest of the map we'll discuss as we go along. So with the map done, now we can discuss the miner, which is basically the simplest thing you can do in the game right now. Unfortunately, it's also, I'm tackling this at first because it's also the bugs, the buggiest thing, although it's not game breaking if you're not talking ethically. You see, the miner right now disregards everything. It knows exactly where everything is and it doesn't even take into account any gate information restrictions you give it. So let's see what I mean. So these guys are actually doing their thing. If I double click on them, I will be taken to it. So this guy is actually going to do nothing. He's not doing anything at the moment. Probably he's already yeah, sold and now there it is the icon of this asteroid. He's moving now to mine again. So that is his basic default setting. He's going to mine. So let's see what he's mining. Information and behavior to see what he's doing. He is auto mining or that's it, as simple as that. So that's all he's doing. His max gate distance is zero, meaning I don't want you to move from the sector I gave you the command. And if I go by the name, I gave the command in Holy Vision. This is Holy Vision and this is actually one of the guys that's actually following the rules. However, welcome to Pontifex. Pontifex claim or miner again is set to zero. Is he in Pontifex? No, he's not. Miners disregard the max gate distance. They also know exactly where all the things are, meaning they know where to go to mine, whether that is liquid or... What's the word? I forget the word. Oh my god. Liquid? This solid? Solid. Solid. There we go. English. We remember them. <clears throat> solid storage. Solid storage is basically ice or nividium and silicon. And liquid is all the stuff that is um, from nebulae, which is hydrogen, methane, and so on. Yes, they are gases, but the game classifies them as liquid, I guess, because it compresses them until they become liquid so that you can mine more, blah, 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 technical stuff, whatever. Gases can be made into liquid under proper conditions of pressure and temperature. There we go. That's the answer. So, 
they know where everything is and they know all the trade orders for them. So they are completely and utterly bugged from an ethical perspective. You give a command to someone to auto mine ore and give it zero gates, it doesn't care. It will go wherever there is plentiful ore according to its logic and then go to sell it wherever it makes the most profit. He doesn't care at all. So they are actually very good at making money, obviously. But if you are opposed to playing something that is clearly packed, then don't use miners, I suppose. But you will have to use miners for now for your own factories, again to be discussed later when we discuss factories. What should happen? Well, a lot of people say that we should they should know only what you know, which is basically by placing satellites. Here I have a satellite which covers this ice refinery and that ice refinery. So that is all that they should know. They should not know about this guy right now. Although it is covered by that, so technically it is within range so it can see it. But what about other guys? Like uh, here. Well, here they don't know anything, but they would come here. If I had somebody giving methane to this graphene refinery, then if I had a miner mining methane, I mean, then he would most probably come here. You shouldn't know this, there is no satellite, there is nothing else going on, nor do I know about this person's, these stations, rather, these stations, trade orders. So I do not know anything about that, nor should that miner. So the view is that it should be only what you know, and of course to maintain the gate requirements, I have said it. But it doesn't. So, how to set up a miner, because we should actually do this. You have a miner, you just bought it, it's a drill vanguard, that's awesome. So let's go information. First thing you'll pop on is probably information panel itself, where you have the name, which is the drill vanguard as we saw, the owner, which is you, that's the name, I haven't changed it yet, where it is, what model it is, etc, etc. And you can have the personnel, which is the captain, and the crew itself, and you can actually talk to them, and from here, and do whatever it is you want. As we can see, actually, this guy is a four star, which is pretty awesome. And that four star is actually very important for your managing of the vessels. We'll see why in just a second. Another thing to note is this is the storage. Keep an eye on the storage. This is very important for regions I will get into. This is where you will find the storage information. And if there is something in it, you can press the click button, the plus, the plus button here, and open the storage to find out what's inside it. Countermeasures deployables, all those depend on what you bought when you bought the thing. So it has 10 satellites and 10 resource probes, because initially I thought that, hey, you're a miner, you should have resource probes. I didn't know it was bugged. So I bought them, now I don't use them, I don't care about them. I probably will though at a later time, maybe it's patched out, and then this will become super effective, maybe. Anyway, moving on. This is just informational. We remember to check the storage here, as we said, and where they are and what the name is. The name is important because you can click on it and then just type into it whatever you want. Obviously, I don't do that just now. But we set behavior. Yay, welcome to behavior. Here we can see plainly the skill of the captain, and this is important because the default behavior is dependent on stars. It cannot do everything. The plunder, for example, which I don't know what it is, actually, uh, because I don't care that much about it right now. I haven't even. I'm just trying to figure out the trade com things, and I don't haven't. This is seems like combat oriented. So anyway, this is requires a four. So he is actually a captain that will be able to plunder. And I will be very, very... Uh, women, what will it be? I don't know what it will be. I will need to remember this guy is here uh, so that I can actually claim him later to place him in a vessel that will do plundering if I so desire. But we'll get to that sometime other when I have figured it out. So, any pilot can do patrols, protect, positions, protect ships, protect stations, dock and wait, of course, follow a ship, fly, fly and wait, and hold position. Actually, hold position is the default if you go to an object, right click it and still remove all orders. Now that ship actually is doing nothing and that's the icon for doing nothing. It's just waiting. 
So that's the hold position, basically. Click on it again, and we can select auto mine. See, auto mine is just one, so it's not even that hard to do. So really, that four guy is wasted, but eh, we'll do use him for now. The importance of this skill over the one is that he should actually be better at um, mining faster and maneuvering better, at least when you're not in sector. If you are in sector, mining is extremely cumbersome. The pathing is not great to say the least, so you will actually have him bumping up all over asteroids and trying to avoid them and he will be terrible. Basically, one of my tests was that I was in sector when he was actually going to uh, mine, and in about 8 hours he made 900,000. Then I left off, uh, out of sector, and he was able to mine 8 million. So, <clears throat> you clearly see that there is a difference there. So, yeah, try to be in a sector that's nothing of yours of very great importance. This is a hampering, of course, of the game, but that's not the point right now of this tutorial. <clears throat> so, auto mine one. If he is actually more than one, he will mine faster and better and will have better chance to make more money. That's just an effect. He is, his is the most effective... Uh, effective? His is the most relevant skill in how well he mines. The crew skill, which actually is apparent here, which is just two, is not that much at the moment. Crew skill at the moment for all your ships, actually, whether they are merchant or combat, is more to do about fixing your ship when they suffer hull damage and maybe even the turrets. We don't know fully yet, not fully, fully, and scientifically, if you like. We have anecdotal evidence. So, key is the very important one. We set auto mine then, because that's what we want him to do. Right, now he does nothing, still, because we need to give him what he is allowed to mine. Since he is a solid storage kind of miner, he will not actually show me any of the liquid, or gases if you prefer, but keep referring to, li to liquid so that we are you know, on the same nomenclature. So, ice, envidium, or, or silicon. So, do I, do I know if there is any Nvidium here? No, I don't even care. I'll just set him as Nvidium because he's a 4 star, so he should actually go for the most expensive resource. And that's all it is. I even leave this at zero, but I will confirm it anyway. He is happy to go and do that thing. There he is. He's absolutely happy to go and start mining. Where is he? There he is. He will just happily go somewhere. At some point, we should actually see his path. He's deciding that right now. We should also change him according to my specifications of how to name my ships, which is... Uh, well, I started him at the void, so that's going to be the... Naboo void. Move the cursor so we can see what we're typing. Nividium minor M. So I know where I started him from, I know what he's mining, and know that he is a miner. Oh, well, there he is. He's happily set a course, he's found the asteroid. Do I have any resource here telling me anything? No. Do I have them? Yes. Do they know if the Nividium is here? Well, they should only know here. Still, he goes here, because as we said, he has knowledge that he shouldn't have. Anyway, he will go and mine this, that's it, we are done for mining, and that is all about mining. He will mine what he finds, he will sell them where he can, that's it, set and forget. Let's move on then to the actual traders, and they are very, very different. Traders actually follow the rules. Traders will stick to a gate specification, and traders will only deal with what you know. So traders right now will not do any, will not go to any of these things, unfortunately, unless some ship has passed over there and it has scanned those, which is information that you will lose very soon. Remember that this game has in the concept of once any entity of mine gets close and factory, then I know its trade offers and what it's selling and what it's buying. However, if I 
don't scan it again and then move out, then the offers of it will start to expire after about expire for me, I mean, not know them. After about an hour, um, is it an hour? I don't know. I actually don't know what the time is, but it's not even an hour. So they will start to be blank for me. I will not know them. So let's see if I know them. We press that, uh, not the legend, filter settings. This is the filter, which means what do I want to see in the map? Right now I'm seeing pink filters, I'm seeing mining filters, and I'm seeing other filters. Which is not what we care about, we care about the trade filters right now. Trade filters have this slash across it, which means it's not activated. So we press this power button to make them active. There we go. Now we don't have any filters, so we are presented with everything. We are presented with containers, solids and liquids. So let's just remove the solids and the liquids for now because we don't want to trade in those. Solids and liquids are only supposed to be about miners. So we shouldn't actually, right now when we're trying to set our trade commands and our trade behaviors, deal in those. It's only about containers. Trade ships have container storage, not solid storage, not liquid storage. So remove those. And if you see, this has ore but we don't care about ore, so now we have more pertinent information. And here we can set how many offers you can get, but that you set it wherever you want. I keep it at three just to sync, keep the in pages a little bit more organized for now at least. That is fine. Right. Um, we obviously want to set it at max price so with that we can have everything shown. Or if you have few money, you just you can set it a little bit less. But we have enough money actually right now, so we can uh, work with anything we want. So we have this thing. What is this? Why does it say six, five, and two stations? Or if I go right here, why does it say three hundred thirty-five stations? Well, that's when you zoom out of the map, you are presented with everything as a summary in the page. As I move in. I get less and less information and now it's broken more and more because I have more information about this uh, station here. So in this silent witness I know about these stations, so now it's 10 stations which on average have these things. As I move closer I will start breaking these up. So now I have 4 stations here because they're very close together so they are presented in a summary. But I, however I have one information from above here, this guy, and he's giving me that one information what this trade offer is. I know this because I have a satellite here for example and I'm, I have placed satellites here so I know these things how they are. If I also have a summary, let's move like that so that there are 10 stations, how do I know what the offer for everything is? Well if I move over it, anti-matter cells, I'm presented with a line. That line shows me exactly what station that sol that sold where's antimatter cells is from. It is from this one, the antimatter cells factory. If I move close to that, then this becomes there it is. That's the offer, the same offer as before. When I move over the item, it shows me a number. When I take it off, it shows me hexagons. The hexagons are how full I think it is. It is basically that this uh, has a, very, a great many deal of antimatter cells to sell. So that's presented by this. So it is basically at full capacity, half capacity, and only slight capacity. That's how it is. Food rations, there are no hexagons because it is extremely empty. It doesn't have anything. So you that would also mean that the price for food rations is going to be the mo most it can be. Every item everywhere in the galaxy has a range. For food rations, the range is going to be, uh, where is that? There it is. Price 140, no, sorry, there it is. Plus 3% from average price, which is actually not a lot, I would think. Still, you have that 144 are actually right here on this station. It appears that that's not enough though, because plus 3 from average price is not a lot, it should be much much more from the average price if it was really empty, which it is not. 
Another thing to note though, is that when you are going all the way like that, you have the best options. So bot wears this guy here, or is that, is plus 10% from average price, because that is a good deal. Still, that's only a summary of the universe and not really targeted for your benefit. What you want to do is set filters. So here is the wares. Add a filter for what you want to sell. Let's say I want to sell or trade or buy or sell energy cells. Now everything here is removed to energy cells. This is going to be the best offer for energy cells. If I click it, actually I set new wear, sorry. Add new wear, energy cells, and now I right click it, and there it is. And that's plus 31% from average price. From experience on this game, I know that 21 credits is actually the top price for energy cells, with the lowest price being 10, which is going to be here, right click it again, and that's minus 34% from average price. So you also get a sense of exactly, even if you don't want to set filters, you know how good of an offer this is. That's going to be basically your up and bottom prices. Let's remove that. Let's set it to drone components, for example. Drone components here are plus 10% from average price, and that's currently the best one, and that is minus 8% from average price. And believe me, that is basically de dependent on the math involved, because the range of drone components is not that big compared to the absolute value that it represents, because basically that is an entire range. So if you are considering that the difference is 400 credits all, where 400 credits is not a lot compared to 2,700. And that's why the difference between average price is not as much as it is with energy cells. Just trust that when you are, when you are viewing the entire galaxy, the, image, the offers you see right now are the best ones currently available as known to you. Again, if you don't know about something, for example, do I know everything here? No. Or here, for example, I don't know sold wares. There are seven stations here and I have no idea what they're selling. See these energy cells, graphene, medical supplies don't have any numbers. These offers are expired. I do know about drone components because at some point I must have been near here, but that's the only one I know. I don't know anything about anything else. If I have a trade extension on my ship, the one I'm currently driving, that is important and that's something I didn't mention when we were talking about buying the ships, the trade extension computer only refers to me. If I drive a ship that has a trade extension, then that means that the values that are scanned as something goes by it will expire that much later. So that's only for me. If you're buying ships that you're not going to pilot, there is absolutely no sense in setting them up with trade extension computers. So, these, although I have seen them, I have seen them so long ago that now I don't know what they are selling anymore. So they are not going to be included in any offer, obviously. So, let's see. Uh, what else? Um, how do you trade? Well, now you know what you want to trade or you don't. Let's remove that filter. Let's say you want smart chips. Sure. Click on them. Now they are a filter. Right click on them to choose. They are minus 10% from average price. Well, that seems rather reasonable. So let's buy some. How? Well, let's take a mining, a trade ship. There it is. Uh, that's idle. That's not doing anything. Okay. So I have selected it. So now I can actually give commands. Now I can actually buy stuff. Where is it? Why do I not have the desired item? I don't have the... Uh, ah, I clicked on botwares because I am stupid. Botwares, of course, means I'm trying to sell to it. Well, I don't have any smart chips to sell to it. So, of course, I cannot... I don't have the desired item, which is smart chips, which is appropriate. So... Sold wares, what they are selling, they are selling smart chips for 203 credits. Right click, there you go, smart chips are selected. If you don't write, if you don't use it like that, but you actually go and hunt for something because you don't have any filters, but you want smart chips, where are they? 
smart chips uh, you, you were somewhere right here smart chips smart chips they are both and i want them traded uh smart chips strength smart chips did i lose them smart chips smart chips i lost them so let's set them up again S click it where are you where are you being sold you're being sold here smart chips okay remove them there it is smart chips it is in that station However, now there is no, I'm not clicking on smart chips, I'm clicking on the factory. The effect is the same, the presentation is different though. If I have the ship selected again, because that's the command, that's the, per, the entity I'm giving the command to. So right click it and trade with the laddie, refined goods complex, because that's that. Then I will have the things here. And this is the first, so that doesn't really count, that blew my entire thesis. Okay, let's say I want Ladianium. Right click, trade. Now Ladianium is not selected. Now it is selected. But that's not what the point is. The point is that this I want to trade with this because I want Ladianium, but it wasn't selected. I might even have had to go for looking for it in a long list of uh, scroll down which you can scroll by using the mouse scroll wheel. However, if you right click on Tladianium, then that immediately is marked right here. If I choose right click trade offers, it just selects the first one. That's the whole difference. Otherwise, it is the same exact interface as that uh, with both options. It's just where to select you or not. So we want smart chips. So they are selling them. They are selling them, we are here. So we want to move the bar towards ours, our thing, our ship. There you go, green is buy. You're buying that and you are extremely small. Why are you extremely small? You probably have cargo. Let's investigate then. Information, you actually don't have cargo. What's going on? Is it that much? It could be. Or you don't have enough, you do have enough. I do not understand what's going on, but that's all it lets me buy. It even lets me only 150. Very, very interesting. I, it's Vanguard. Oh, I know what's happened. There it is. I know what happened. Okay. Which is actually news for me, but that's important uh, for uh, prosperity. As I was inside the information, I was no longer selecting that. As I was inside it, I was actually selecting me, which is, I had clicked on something, but I was still on information. Select Teladi. This is my current ship's hold. Just make sure you are clean about what you're doing. So exit, select the Ides of Vanguard, because you can get information about it without having it selected and then your commands are not going to be relevant to that ship, it's going to be relevant to yours. This is, yes, tricky, yes, I know, it even tricked me. And I've spent so much hours on this. This is basically now two game hours, I've spent two, 48 hours on this one game. Game. Well, I'll spend more on that, below the rev might. <clears throat> Property, select the one you want to use for trade. Right click, trade. Now we have 7,400 cubic meters to deal with. So, smart chips. Drag, click anywhere and drag and you get all of it. You don't actually have to be at the edge. You could be if you want, like click first and then move. But that is going to be elsewhere. You don't have to actually click on the dot. You don't have to start from there. You don't have to start from here. You can click inside it and then just drag. Just a little bit of tutorial about that. So, we want all of that. We are spending 31,000. 301,000, sorry. Interesting point and very vital point to consider about market. When you set that order, that is locked. In X3, if you wanted to buy something, if you gave a command for a trader to go and buy something off that station, it wouldn't be locked. It would just be go and try to do that. He would go there and by the time he got there, 
and now the 10 traders might have come in and taken everything and then he would not have anything to buy. In X4, when you set the trade, then that trade sticks. This is a contract. You have now signed a contract with that station that you're going to buy this much for that price and nobody else can get that from you. So confirm it and that is it. He now has specific orders to go there and take that and make that order happen. And that station has agreed that this amount of goods will be available for him at that price. That is set in stone, nothing can change that, unless you destroy the station. But that's not what we are talking about here. Under normal conditions, the trade will happen. It's guaranteed the moment you hit confirm. So right now, the game actually believes that, you know what, this ship actually has this available. So when I want to actually go and sell them, I go all the way to the outside of the universe so that I can see all the offers. And here is who can basically buy them at the best price currently available. It's not much of a difference. So right click, smart chips and sell. Because again, now he has them. He hasn't bought them yet. Keep that in mind. He hasn't traveled all the way to the factory to go and pick them up. But the game does say you are guaranteed to have them. So I'm going to consider your sale option as valid. The same goes for the sale, op for the sale option. Right now the station says if you agree on this, I will make them available for for to buy from you i will not have too much of a storage here at my station and i am committed to buying this much from you at that price and also as an added benefit it also shows you what your profit is going to be of course that's not a great profit and so you may not want to do this or wait but why not let's just confirm it and be done with it that is one way to think about things. Now, another great thing is the following. You gave that ship command, right? Well, how about I give it another one? How about I say now I want you to go and hunt for... Dum, 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 dum. Let's say I want uh, electronics. No, these are bad for other reasons. We're going to consider that later. Where are hull parts? There you are. Hull parts. Right. This is better. So... Let me just go and buy all parts for the entire storage. Again, it knows that by that time I'm setting this order, the hull will be empty. So it allows me to accept this thing. Confirm, I'm spending 119,000. Confirm. And now let's sell them. And now I made another 62,000. Confirm. All those trades are now locked in. All those trades will take place one after the other. All those trades will be guaranteed to give me that exact product. So I know that right now this is something that's going to happen. And that's why I have a figure up here saying 1,462,000 due from trades. It has added up all the profit from all the trades that, it's know, that it knows currently it's going to do. And it has added them up to tell me Whatever you're going to do, when all the traders and all the miners have sold their stuff, this is how much more you're going to have right now. So this is how that number is being calculated, because all the trades are final and are on a contract base at the moment they are made. Pretty cool. However, you don't want to spend your entire life doing all these things, right? Right. You want to do something better with your life, which is the next best thing. Let's select this guy and go to information now. No, we don't care about selecting anymore. All we care about is giving it the order to actually go and do this for a living on his own as he sees fit. Well, with some constrictions based from us. First thing to consider, while you're in information page, does this have an empty inventory? If it does not have an empty inventory, then Whatever is currently in its inventory will be ignored for the duration of his auto trade mechanics. If this guy had 5000 of his storage filled with whatever, then he would only have the rest 2400 available to do his job as auto trader. So always make sure that your new auto trader 
doesn't have anything in his storage capacity. Next thing to note is just go to behavior. Is does he have three stars? If he does, that's awesome because right now the auto trade does require three stars. Up until recently, if your auto trader was not actually three star and he was well your intended auto trader at least, if he didn't have three stars and he had two, then you could actually circumvent this by selecting that auto trader actually from here, going into a sector, right click, and you would have here stuff like trade or galaxy do do an import and output and export and all of these things this was a bug this was never these all of these commands were part of an auto trade mechanic uh, they were only supposed to be available to captains that were three stars or above however because it wasn't and it was a bug and it was appearing to any captain at all then Egosoft currently removed that option from appearing in the right click menu and so we don't have them anymore i'm hoping that we will get them back to appropriate to appropriate captains like this guy this is a three star so he should have those so anyway just keep that in mind that right now we do not have that so we are going but he is good enough to become a an auto trader just to prove the point i'm not selecting him i'm just right clicking and setting information he is three stars so he can actually auto trade great so now what? Again, you need to tell him what he's going to be able to trade in. So if now I add stuff, so I have to select what I want. Yes, if you want him to deal in everything, you should select everything. And if you select something like missile components, then the next adwares will not have missile components in the list. That's excluded. Keep that in mind. Press X to remove it, of course, and then adwares to see the new one back in there so you select missile components and you select uh, drone components and you select uh, blah, 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 whatever else uh, let's say microchips that's your list i would advise i'm well, i would advise you my personal preference in this is that the traders be limited to a few things so basically i have set up my guy to deal in all components i have another guy set to deal in things that are needed for ship construction and I have another guy set to deal with foods and so on, so, so, so stuff. That's, of course, completely up to you. Well, whatever you want him to deal with, you have to select. If you don't select it, he's not going to deal with it. Next one is max trade. Well, let's select something else. Shield components, or scanning arrays, whatever. Uh, this is only education, so we don't mind. Right, next thing. Max get distance 2 and max get distance 2. Very nicely. So what is that? Well, that is actually max gate distance to buy from. This is how long he will go from the current sector he's in when he's given the command by pressing confirm where he can buy stuff. So if you give it zero, he will only be allowed to trade in that sector. The next max gate distance to is sell. So if you give him 10, then what you're telling him basically is that buy this stuff from this sector and then sell them anywhere within 10 gates distance. Pretty simple. This is your approximation of export goods from the command you had before from right clicking. Conversely, if you set that, then that means buy these things and bring them here to sell. This is the import command. So you can see that, or you can just set it like that and then means buy anything from anywhere and sell it, well not anything, buy these strings from anywhere in the galaxy and sell these things anywhere in the galaxy. So now he's a galaxy trader. This is basically what was happening before with the right click command as I said again. But you can do these things right now with this. You will listen to those settings and if you basically want to have one advice from me keep those at basically three three there and that basically allows it to sell within a specific range so if you said if you start him from here for example and you say three then he will go one two three and one two three and one two three so he will build your reputation around here Set to two from here, he will go one, two, or one, two, or one, two, or one, two. So he will build reputation here by trading. 
this is how gates work. Finally, hit confirm, and that's going to say, sell, set him up, and so he will just go and do stuff. There he is, undock, he's gonna start doing that command. Again, commands, uh, I like to name my guys, as I said, because I specialize them, so this guy would have been component trader, for example, or some something like that. And that's it, basically, for trading. You have to know the guys, obviously this guy right now, since he's passed here, he knows what's going on for trades here, but I have a filter, so there he knows these guys, but he doesn't know this guy. Then some advanced electronics are going on here, but we don't actually know what these things is, because we have never been near them, and we don't have a satellite near them. Um, can I say anything else about that? Well some anecdotal information further to that. It has been discussed long that the traders and miners should have uh, engines that are from the travel variety, because that gives you a bigger boom speed when traversing large distances. That is technically correct, however many people have noted that the combat engines actually do not need to charge before getting away, which might actually be of more benefit to you than anything else. That to me doesn't seem very straight though, because what if you are get you get hit while you are accelerating? You're not moving that fast. You're not accelerating that fast in order to evade uh, fire from weapons. Maybe well, I know we are talking about AI here, and AI is not that good. But if you do get hit because there's just so many of them, then it's not going to matter how fast or how that it's not gonna matter that you don't need to charge up before you actually go into acceleration mode for the travel speed is it you're gonna get interdicted because you will be you can get interdicted and if you get shot while in travel mode you do get out of travel mode so i really don't have any personal experience i'm learning this as i go I have tested it, actually half of my guys have travel modes and half of them have combat modes, combat drives, sorry, travel travel engines and drives, travel, travel drives, travel engines, I don't know, I think it's travel engines. So half of them have travel engines and half of them have combat engines. And I'm gonna see how many of them survive and how many do not. And then I will see. Right. And with that, let's discuss one final thing about how to how I am actually setting down these uh, satellites. I have some guys here that are actually carrying satellites, like this sat deployer. Let's go there. He is here because he has set up a satellite. So what you can do is by selecting him again, because if you don't select him, right click, nothing happens. Select him. Now stuff happens. So I can actually go to, let's go to these guys. Uh, I complained I don't have information about a specific site. There you go, this. We don't have information about these guys. See, open it up, well, we do have about some of the stations. But for example, target components are forgotten. I know some things, I know don't know advanced composites, I don't know tart components, I know other things. And this is time until information expires, which is actually three hours. A lot. And here it's below three hours, so actually it's much more than one hour that I had considered previously. That's your time limit, which is a lot. Maybe. Anyway, you have this information here. We select the SAT deployer and we I'd like to go right click civilian satellite and now his path is plotted we can see him coming here and that icons means drop something then I want him to come here and civilian satellite now he will come here and drop a satellite and then come here and drop a satellite and then come here and drop a satellite and that's how I go about getting him to actually do all the things I need to. And satellite, how many is that? Because he has eight. And this doesn't reduce. So that's one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. It's still at eight, seven, and that's a nice plot. Eight. That's eight, and then I can actually take him to the wharf to uh, dock at first because I can actually do uh, go upgrade repair. And if I go to do upgrade repair, then I actually do bring up the menu of him about upgrading or repairing, which does include also restocking with consumables, which is what I'm going to do actually. There he is. So I go consumables, buy some satellites again. Unfortunately, this does get counted. He, as I said, he has eight, but he's going to be have deploy he's gonna have deployed the eight. Well, sadly we cannot do anything about that. I do give that command, add to shopping list, not enough resources. Well, that's your trade opportunity right there for you. Smart chips and scanning arrays, bring them to the station, collect some money, and that's great and awesome. Which doesn't have there? That that guy. Which brings us neatly to something else. That wharf has very few requirements for those things. It only has 146 scanner arrays, for example. So what do I do with it? Well, the information is here. Not that guy. There is a guy, though. I think it's that guy. Not even that guy. Shit. I'm looking bad. That guy? Yep, that guy. That guy already has energy cells in him. How did that happen? Well, it happens like this. Let's set the filters back on. And let's get energy cells as a filter by clicking on them. Click once it's setting the uh, filter, clicking it again resets it. Right click if you want to make the trade. So here it is. The best price right now is for energy cells 10. Right click to sell. Sorry. And we don't want to buy. <coughs> okay, right click and sell. Well, that guy buys about everything. However, it could be... I'm not going to do that, actually. Let's go somewhere else, because I need to make the point. Energy cells there, bought energy cells there. This guy only bought 2018. So it actually... He bought 139, sorry. So from my 2957, I came down to 2018. 118. This is what can happen when you select manual trade options. You buy the entire stock, you fill up your, your ship, and then you give it one sell command, but you don't actually pay attention, as I did not pay attention, that it, his entire stock has not been sold. So you leave him there. And what happens is that he is left with inventory full of energy cells. So when you actually do sell to someone make sure that your inventory is is depleted if it's not depleted issue another one because here is the fun part uh cancel i will confirm you to show you with another thing no still the same guy his inventory remember is now empty considering about trade options because we don't want any the the trade orders are contracts so that's why for the game the game now believes that if i start a new trade i will not have any inventory space left so i'm gonna or rather the other way around i'm gonna have completely empty inventory space so wheat let's buy some wheat salt there buy that i bought everything confirm i filled my stock again confirm so, I'm going to sell it to this guy. This is the most expensive guy. And I know this happens with wheat, and that's why I'm doing this example. So, 47 credits. Sell. I'm not over. Confirm. 47 credits again to some other station. Notice it's going somewhere here now. See that line where it's going? Somewhere here. Right click. Again, it's marked for your convenience. Right click. Sell. Confirm. Now 46, it dropped. Do keep this in mind. This is the proof that we have about this offer being the best. It's giving you the best offer right now 
you started with the 47 once the 47s are done it's giving you the next best offer which is for 46 confirm that we still have a 46 offer sell that and now we have everything sold we made more profit by wasting time in traveling but we made more profit you have to decide if that's worth it or not and you also have to decide if you want to we, rather you have to pay attention that your inventory space is not completely used up and you sold everything in your manual trades last bit about inventory sometimes your traders will come up against a stuck condition some of the traders will actually hold because they do not have enough in they don't have anywhere to sell the, their trades again I don't know exactly how that happens, it's a bug that we know as the X4 community. However, the auto traders will sometimes not fulfill their trades. How that happens, we don't know because it is supposed to be completely um, watertight about how it makes the trades. As I said, if you make the trade and the computer makes the trade in auto trading, then it should be binding and there should be space and money for you to have sold them. But they don't. So they sit around with half of the inventory or the inventory full and not knowing what to do with it. At that point, you have the opportunity to either just go to them information and uh, select the... I cannot find it again, can I? Information, there it is. No, it's not. Uh, give me a full one, please. There you go. So this has guy has missile components 12 because he's doing specific trade. So I'm going to select some and then drop it. This is very small because this is not comparable to his uh, inventory space. That's why you can see it. But it's going to be go basically like that full. Can I find a better example? Uh, hopefully, maybe, yeah, information. Sure, there you go. You are. So you select that, 300, drop in 227, drop it immediately out of his inventory space. It's lost money, yes, but if you cannot find where to sell them, what else are you going to do? Just drop them off or... Keep them until the better opportunity are, arises. Whatever. Just know that it can happen. So you are in the know. And that's all. That was indeed a long tutorial, but this subject is actually rather long and important. And you do need to know everything that can happen in, in a trade system and how you make money is very, very important because if you don't have money, how are you going to go and do stuff? By combat, you say. Sure. I'm with you, but there are people who want to play the trade game and this is what this tutorial has been about. I hope this has been of use to those that do want to trade. I hope you understand now how to trade or how to mine. If you want to do it yourself, that's another good ballpark. Why you want to do this yourself? I don't know, that's boring even for me and I love this trade shit. So go and explore and be my guide i just realized one thing you cannot mind nebula as yourself no way no way if you want to mine though uh, for yourself do realize that when you actually come in and out of a system when you pass through the gates then your turrets if they're mining turrets will not actually work and you have to give them the command again yourself it's a current bug we know it you now know it too reset your turrets if you have mining turrets to to mine to break up asteroids and then your mines will work again after you have crossed a gate so i think that's all that we're gonna do right now and i do hope you enjoyed this and learned something and that's gonna be it until next time until then be safe